Hello and welcome back to Boring Dead Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Little Guardsmen. Um, we'll load into it from here, because when we when we go in in a sec, uh, the cutscene is going to start immediately, so we we'll to make sure we're ready for that. Level 5 now. Just had the game show. Unsuccessfully rescuing the princess. Lil, rise and shine. <laughs> Why, Dad, you rise, you shine. I'll take five more minutes. It's time to get up. Shouldn't you be down at the guard shed? And shouldn't I be heading down to cover for you? <laughs> Do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news first. We have to work the night shift tonight. I'm going back to bed. Mm. No, you're getting out of this house and taking some time to yourself today. Why do we have to work the night shift? Uh, good news or bad news? Bad news first. <laughs> Apparently you didn't pick the right person's champion for the rescue mission. Whatever that means. And they're punishing you for it. I think that would happen and regardless. And I will be able to cover for you. Because I'm also working the night shift at the East Gate. Okay. And what's the good news? There isn't any. I guess it was just bad news this time. <laughs> Who's punishing you? No one. I work the night shift a couple times a week to help us get by. Oh, Dad. I didn't know that. So, I guess you could say the economy is punishing me. That and inflation. If taxes keep going up, I might have to get a third job so we can keep affording things like your little doohickey here. Or you could stop gambling all your money away and losing it. We don't touch that! Whoa! What just happened? Do you want the good news or the bad news? Both are. I don't know. Do you feel okay? I feel fine, sweetie. No need to look all blurry about it. <laughs> now you get out of here and enjoy your day off. But don't enjoy it too much. You have to work all night, remember? Okay, okay, I'm going. Just uh, try not to operate any heavy machinery until I get back. I should probably check in with Dr. B and make sure my dad isn't radioactive. Um, Alright, well we've talked to dad, haven't we? We don't need to do it again. <clears throat> that with us let's go what's going on with those rats uh oh god the rat problem is even worse than i thought we eat all of our meals here hmm okay <laughs> What if we put the music on? People are sleeping upstairs. Better not. Okay. Well, Fantastico is wearing a rat hat now. This hat, it is not as fantastic as my previous hat. Mm. My journey, it continues. I haven't got any money, but we'll we'll go and have a look in the alley anyway. Lamont, how's it going, guys? Hey, if it isn't Little Miss, I haven't been around for a while. Where you been all this time? Not around. I got what every kid fears they'll get one day. A job. Chicken box? <laughs> Worse than that, Simon. I got a job. What are you up to? Well, you just missed the rock throwing portion of our morning. Sadly, we chucked the last rock in the alley over the fence. Next, well. We were thinking of seeing if we could get our mitts on some of the cool stuff that Garby guys got over there. They look like magical toys, basically. One of the few perks of my job is getting to play with those toys. Can confirm, they're fun. Come on, Lil. Hit up Garby for some loot for us. I, mean, I haven't got any cash, so... Most of these criminals are part of the Notorious Hilltop Gang. Bunch of dorks. 
Um, so these are the devs at uh, the Hilltop uh, studio. <laughs> Apart from Desdemona down there, and probably the Goblin. Hi, Lil. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not quite ready to open up the shop yet. I can't seem to find my inventory key. What are you doing up so early? Work in the graveyard shift tonight. So, I'm finally available to see some of my friends who have responsible parents and reasonable bedtimes. <laughs> People like those small hooligans over there? Those aren't small hooligans. They're my friends. And I was actually coming to talk to you about letting us borrow a couple of items. I stand by my statement. And we can talk about loaning you some merchandise later. But first, I've lost the key to my inventory, and I think one of them might have stolen it. Maybe you could talk to them for me. Work your little guardsman magic and see what you could do to get it back. On it. Okay, yeah, I'll try that. All right, guys, time to confess. Which one of you took poor Garby's inventory key? Was me. I don't know. I ain't seeing nothing. So that's the way it's gonna be, is it? Listen, I need that key to upgrade tools and buy more power crystals, so one of you is gonna tell me who's responsible. Are you a lawyer all of a sudden? <laughs> nope, but I'm a guardsman. I hope you got your story straight, cause I really don't wanna go down to the guard shed and get my metal detector. So tell me, which one of you took Garby's key? <clears throat> Uh, I think this is just talking to them rather than accusing. Between you and me, I saw Lamont poking his big, dumb, handsome nose that sits in the middle of his gorgeous face all around that booth. It was probably him. Oh, he's such a bad boy, but also... It was Simon. Hmm. I've never brought this up to the group before, but I think Isla is a kleptomaniac. I always see her taking things out of Lamont's backpack when he's not looking. But also, I could make up my mind now or dig a little deeper. Uh, so I think maybe Lamont stole it. I wouldn't be surprised if Isla has it now, though. I know it wasn't me. I'm in a bit of a two-strike situation with my parents, and I'll be sent to the National Ballet School in Marvog if I get in trouble again. But I'm telling you, Lamont got here first, and I saw him rooting around Garby's shop. I said it before, I'll say it again. It was Isla. <laughs> okay, maybe Isla isn't a klepto, but she did go through his bag just before you got here. Maybe she's got a good reason to be going through his stuff. I got here third, so I didn't see anything. So, did you figure out who took my key? Uh, I think maybe Isla took it and stashed it in Lamont's bag and then she's blaming him. That's what I think. I hate to be a narc, but I think it was. I'm pretty sure Isla did it. She's a little girl with the glasses. Thanks, Lil. I'll be right back. Hey, you. Little girl with a bad haircut. Stay right where you are. Ugh, they ran off. Probably with my key. Thankfully, I've got this heavy metal rod back here, and if you give me just a minute, I'll bash the damn thing open. Ugh, this is not how I planned to start my day. Anyway, what can I get you? I got no cash, so I can't buy anything anyway, but... Uh, so I guess, I guess we'll end that there, having accused our friends of theft, chased them off. Here, what we got? We got the the boring ditch with chairs. It has washrooms. Malcolm's office. Guard shed star shift. We'll go to the dig site because she did mention talking to B about if, if our dad's. Oh, it's closed. There's a note. I have convened a meeting at the Majors Guild. The dig site is closed for the day. Well, that's just great. What am I supposed to do now? I guess I could go back in time to when she was here. Ah. 
But Dr. B did say I could only use it at the guard shed. Maybe that's why it's on the fritz? I better just get to my ship before this thing explodes. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go see Malcolm. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know why, but... Must be a reason we're able to visit. <laughs> the goblins in the dungeon. Hey, guys. Can't speak to them. Oh. Response. Yeah, I think that's the same observations as before. Okay, well, I guess we'll leave. We could go try going to the stadium. So we got the Brawl Sprawlers versus the Milton Marauders. I've mean, only got 13 gold. I don't know if that's enough to place a bet, but... Oh, hello, dear. Are you here to watch the Goblin Ball game? Hiya, Mrs. A. I usually find Goblin Ball too boring to watch. Unless, of course, there's a little action on it, if you know what I mean. I most certainly do. I've got this month's pension check riding on a sure thing tip that's gonna pay out big time. You sure seem confident, Mrs. A. Care to share that tip with this underage gambler? Your father wouldn't be pleased with me, but I'll tell you what. Since I really bet the ranch on this next game, I don't have any gold left to buy my snacks. Would you be willing to help a little old lady buy a large hat made of nacho chips with melted cheese sauce on top? Mama just can't enjoy the game without one. Um, we don't have that much. I don't think I should, Mrs. A. Heavily salted food at your age could contribute to what I'm guessing is an already existing heart condition. Why, you presumptuous little... No matter. I'm sure Fredo will spot me for it. I'll be good for it after my bet comes through anyway. What about Fantastico? He's got a beer hat this now. This hat... It is not as fantastic as my previous hat. My journey... It continues. <laughs> one day. One day. Step right up, one and all, and win some money on the Goblin Ball. Hello again, Fredo. Again? I've never seen you before in my life. But I placed a bet with you on the last game. Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> the Kaladar Lightning game against the Brawlers? I won some money. Okay, if you say so. Person I've never seen before. Anyways, you want to make a bet on the game? I mean, if I can make one for 35 gold. Here are the teams at play, kiddo. Which one do you want to hear about? Okay, what does he think about us? Ah, the home team. People either love them or they hate them. Me? I'm indifferent. But with the princess missing, the kingdom could really use a win right now. Nah, if only those bums would get up off their behinds and show a little hustle every now and again. Great team, though. Are you sure you want to bet on them? Okay. Here are the teams at play, kiddo. What about the Milton Marauders? This team went under a major rebranding and hired a whole new set of eager rookies. They're fast, but lack the muscle mass that some of the more seasoned teams have. Let's hope the starch in those new uniforms doesn't slow them down too much. You sure you want to bet? Here are the teams at play. All right, let's maybe put a bet on the home ah, team, then. Don't. Yeah, if only those bu Yes. How much you're looking to gamble? Ten. Yes. We're all good. All right, kid. Your bet is in. Good luck. All right. Let me go and watch Let's the game. Let's watch some Goblin Ball. Come on, home team. <laughs> what an embarrassing series of unfortunate accidents for the Sprawl Brawlers. No. First Jorbala Pepstein failed to barrel roll out of the way of the Marauders' lightning-fast offensive line. Then the dynamic duo Edie and Audrey O'Goblin only shaved 12 of the 14.7 seconds off of the time the Brawlers needed to open the Diamond Snoff's cage. It all comes down to the final wagon wheel toss today, folks, and the coach has sent in Sir Warren of Bainbridge, the bad boy of the Brawlers' midfield passive-aggressive line. <laughs> 
He's muttering something to himself. He spits. He lifts the wheel above his head. He spins. He spins again. He spins a third time, and it's launched. The Marauder's Weather Wizard can't touch a throw like that, and it's through the posts. The Sprawl Brawlers win. Yay! <laughs> this gambling thing's easy. Lucky guess, kid. Come back next time for all your illegal gambling needs. Just ask for Fredo. Cool. Well, we bet as much as we could, and we've almost doubled our money, so you can't complain too much. Um, and the absence of anywhere else to go. What's this? That's the shop. I still don't have enough to really buy anything, so I think we go to the guard shed then. Uh, yeah, we've done everything. What's this? A mysterious present? Perhaps a secret admirer? To whom it may concern, your choice of champion for the princess rescue mission was found acceptable. Unfortunately, we haven't heard much from the mage yet, just a lot of squeaks and chirps from his tower. Regardless, please find enclosed a one-time bonus for your proficiency in character evaluation. Tar for now. P.S. My regrets on your nighttime work and convenience. Thank you, Councilwoman Ash. You've received a free truth spray slot upgrade. Oh, that's 50 gold's worth. That's pretty good. Sweet. Take that. There's no rip for the night shift. However, there is a book labeled Monster Manual sitting in front of Lil. Huh. Goodness. Okay, there's eight of these. Uh, doppelgangers, shapeshifters, frequency, very rare. Uh, susceptible to physical damage, cha chaotic evil, small to medium humanoid. Does your loved one seem more addled than usual? Maybe they've been replaced by a doppelganger. These monstrous creatures have the ability to superficially assume the appearance of anyone. When dealing with a suspected shapeshifter, show them an item they should recognize. Where possible, show them their child. Show them Jimmy. Note. Chemical compounds such as the patented truth spray have no effect on what are essentially gelatinous blobs. Mm. Forest Ent it is, eh? Eh? Frequency rare. Stomp and or thwomp special attacks. Weaknesses fire. Woodcutter's axes. Poorly administered town hall meetings. True neutral. Size climbable. <laughs> the story of the first transformation from mundane tree to sentient mobile being is lost to history. These creatures are extremely dangerous, but generally motivated by threats to their territory. The bark of the forest entity is often the site of the cryptic magical runes and prophetic writings that can be deciphered. The bark is often the site. Okay, so we need the decoder ring for them. Goblins we've seen before. When the great expansion of the sprawl was undertaken by King Oswin I, and then his son King Oswin II, goblins participated as laborers and artisans in the city's construction. In recent times, various crimes and misfortunes have been widely attributed to this group, leading to their decreased presence in public life. Whether or not they have an actual predisposition for crime and mayhem is hotly debated by the High Council and non-Hugh rights groups. Red herring. Frequency, about 50-50. <laughs> Cause confusion, create conflict where none should exist. Size, small fish to giant and everything in between. Beware the red herring. Its siren's call has led many adventurers to follow the wrong path or to find enemies where none exist. Use your judgement and don't believe everything you hear or see. The temptation to believe a red herring is strong, but be vigilant and you will come out on top. Lycanthropes, aka werewolves. Rare. Your bestial rage, the weakness to silver and the rising sun, chaotic evil, size, post-transformation equals big AF. <laughs> Academics are split on whether this affliction is magical or medical. The cursed or afflicted person suffers an attack or bite, and come the first full moon transforms into a half-man, half-beast killing machine. In most cases, the individual remains blissfully unaware of the transformation, but in some cases they know and desperately seek asylum to save their loved ones from their dark passenger. Mole people, common. Special attacks, digging, biting when provoked. Weaknesses, daylight, but it's non-fatal. Varied, often true neutral alignment, size small. Long ago, a subset of humans and elves carved out a life underground. A life lived underground. This evolutionary branch began to change to accommodate their new existence. They became smaller, relying more heavily on their sense of smell and hearing than, smell and hearing than their soon underdeveloped eyesight. In addition, their hands and fingers became more claw-like because of the digging. While considered disfigured and even monstrous by some, please do not persecute the mole people. They are not to be punted. After all, without mole person labour and digging know-how, the sprawl wouldn't enjoy the world's greatest sewer system. Necromancer, rare, raises undead. Weaknesses, their egos. Lawful evil, all bodies of each bodies. 
Magic practitioners who have broken their codes and oaths and turned to the forbidden arts. Although not illegal, they should be discouraged from entering the sprawl. Note. The Mage's Guild would gladly welcome a fallen wizard who has seen the error of their ways back into the fold. However, not one has yet chosen to give up the dark arts once they've tasted that sweet, sweet necromancy. And lastly, we've got vampires. Common. Special attacks. Change into bat. Hypnosis. Flight. Dental peculiarities. Weaknesses. Sunlight. UV. Garlic. Counting bags of small grains. Wooden stakes. Alignment. Usually evil, but best not to judge a book by its cover. Human-sized. In centuries past, vampires were the stuff of myths and legends, sticking to the shadows and covering up their ghastly deeds in order to remain hidden from polite society. Recently, as a result of the powerful vampire rights movement led by goth rock icon Vlad Extreme, vampires have come out of the closet and many have become productive members of society. Okay. Hmm. So we're going to see some, see some of them today, probably. Uh, okay, so we have eight crystals. So one, two, three... Hang on. There's five, six, seven, eight. So I could put something in everything, couldn't I? Uh, so let's do that. There we go. Don't need to rely on the crappy crystals. Vampire. Good evening, child. <laughs> I have not seen you at the post before. Yeah, you know how it goes. Drew the short straw this time. Burning it at both ends, you know. Just gotta keep on trucking through. I hear you. Working the graveyard shift myself. Yeah. You said it. Okay, so... Um... I mean, we'll start off by talking to him. What did you say your name was, sir? Heinrich. And last name? Von Pyer. Von Pyer? Von Pyer. Von Pyer. Title? Uh, Count. <laughs> your name is Count Heinrich Von Pyer? <laughs> yes. Um, tease him. What? Were the less obvious names taken? I have no idea what you mean. I happen to come from a long line of vampires. I have no doubt in my mind. Mm. Okay, uh... There's definitely nothing on here. Oh, it's the monster manual. So, yeah, it's... He might be a, he might be a good vampire. Um... So I'm going to talk to him again. So, are you, uh... Running late? Yes, I am. So if you wouldn't mind inviting me in, there is an urgent matter I must attend to. Did you say invite you in? Yes, it was an arrangement I had with the guard who normally works this location. An arrangement that, if broken, would be a real pain in the neck, so to speak. Okay, but why do I need to invite you? It's just a nice thing that people do for people. Wouldn't you like to be invited into places? I guess I would. See? It's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Okay, well, I think I'm going to truth spray him because he's, he seems to be denying that he's a vampire, which he obviously is. <laughs> Your tawdry magic spray does not have any effect on me, child. Oh. Uh, I think I'm going to turn him away. Because he's obviously, I mean, he is obviously a vampire. Um, see, we'll see, what, see what happens. He said not to judge a book by his cover. The fact he was denied, <laughs> he's got no picture. <laughs> yeah. I don't There's know. no way I'm going to let you in. You're clearly a vampire. You're here to suck the blood of the innocent and create evil minions. Hey, there is no need for that. Excuse me? Yes, I am a vampire. But I am not defined by it. I am also a prominent member of this society. And I am running late for my job at my clinic. I am a chiropractor. Mm. I've never heard of a late-night chiropractic clinic before. It is for other vampires. There are more of us than you think. 
And I do not appreciate you discriminating against us with your hurtful and dated vampire stereotypes. I'm sorry, I never knew. This is my first night shift. I mean, sure, when the odd normie comes in, we crack their back and then maybe bite their neck a couple of times, but it's <laughs> all in good fun. <laughs> now, would you kindly reconsider your choice and invite me in already? Oh. Oh, alright, let's let him in. What's the Thank worst that could happen? For the lovely invitation. I accept. <laughs> Thank you, little girl. Until the next time you work the night shift. Hopefully that's never. Have a good time in there. I have no idea what rating we'll have on this one. Yeah, okay, so we, we missed out on the top score because we let him in. But it's still a three-star rating, so, you know. It's not as bad as it could have been. This guy again. Listen, little girl, there isn't much time. You must send me to jail immediately. I pray you don't make me explain any further. We haven't the time. Yeah, okay. I think he's a werewolf then. He's, he's got kind of a moon on his badge type thing. All right. This guy doesn't seem interested in small talk. I better get on with the job. Yeah, we'll send him straight to jail. I think he's a werewolf on the verge of changing. From what the werewolf description, that seems to be something they, they might do, so... Then it's what he asked for, so there you go. Thank you. Bless you, child. The world is a safer place now. I really hope you get the help you need. Yeah. You observed and understood this man's affliction, lichenism. You made the right decision and quickly. Good. Who's next? Um... Oh my god! <laughs> okay, I'm thinking this is a uh, shapeshifter. <laughs> no, no, little one. Not a god, just an incredibly handsome mortal. People make that mistake all the time. It is I, Prince Phineas, heir to the throne of Petrarch. Incredibly handsome? Really? <laughs> Eleven out of ten, baby. <laughs> Barf. Huh. <sighs> Do you have anything to declare? Please say no and just go about your business. As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I declare that I am... Drunk? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, actually, hold on. Yes, yes, I am drunk, sauced, three sheets to the wind, nay, four sheets. No sheet. Okay, and I feel like I'm gonna regret asking, but what have you been doing tonight? What do you want me to say, milkmaids? Uh, or what I've been doing with the milkmaids? Well, we've come this far. What have you been doing with the milkmaids? I got thrown out for trying to stretch a single into a double. What? <laughs> Gross. Aren't you here trying to win the hand of Princess Desdemona? Well, sure I am, but when the Mage's Guild throws a party in your honor, boy, do they know how to show you a good time. And you can't stop a fox from stealing eggs, am I right? Huh? What? What does that even mean? It means everyone always thought the Sprawl was crazy for being aligned with such an uptight group of old boars. They really know how to show a guy a good time. No, I meant the thing about the foxes stealing eggs. Can't stop them, and I'm the fox. Barf, 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 barf. <laughs> good night, Prince Phineas. That's me. Ha. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. Now get out of here, you drunk fool. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. He, I reckon we're going to get a shapeshifter. Good evening, my dear. This is this could be them. You're out awful late, especially with all these comings and goings about the sprawl. Oh, my stars! Would you look at the time? How the day does get away from you. I'd best be turning in. 
I'll talk to her first. My dad will sure be glad I've seen at least one familiar face tonight. Your dad? Yeah, you know my dad. Hamish. Oh, yes. Hamish. Your dad, Hamish. Mm. Best be getting home to bed. That's funny. I don't think I've ever heard you call him Hamish before. Yes, usually I call him your dad. No, usually you call him Shamish. Yes, Shamish. Best be getting home to bed. Clearly, okay, she's clearly a doppelganger. What could we do? We could try the x-ray. Let's just make sure she's got no bones. <laughs> Gelatinous cube. You know, normally I expect to see more bones and, you know, human innards. Oh my stars, would you look at the time? How the day does get away from you. I best be turning in. Yeah, that seems pretty off to me. Now the question is, what should I do with the shapeshifter? Do, do you lock them up? What, what does it say about them? Chaotic evil. Should I jail her? Yeah, I'm going to send her to jail. Clearly a doppelganger trying to get into the city. Oh well, wow. look at the photo. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. A, but I think this is for your own good. Boy, that felt awful to say. Oh, my stars, would you look at the time? How the day does get away from you. I best be turning in. Guards, take this sweet little old lady to prison. Man, this just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> well, oh. that's weird. Oh, we only got a two. Something seemed especially monstrous about the old bag tonight. She's the dungeon master's problem now. So I wonder where we lost points on that, then. Maybe we shouldn't have jailed her? Oh, I don't know. I, th I, th I think it's better to have taken that off the streets, though. Oh, hello. Well, well, well. If it isn't the little girl who works the guard shed. I was hoping we'd meet again. I'd love to stay and chat, but I have a rather important meeting to attend. Okay, obviously a necromancer. Let's start with the truth spray. I wonder If he seems like he's going to change his ways, maybe we'll let him in. When I was a little boy and my powers were beginning to form, I had a budgie named Petey. Petey was my best, nay, only friend. When he flew full speed into the window and fell to the floor, my innate ability to rouse the dead awakened. Have I spent most of my adult life trying to hide these forbidden gifts? Yes. Do they come in handy when certain foreign visitors practice their ballet and decapitate a few chambermaids? Also, yes. Mm. Yeah, we'll ask him about that. And what exactly is this meeting you're attending? If you must know, I was summoned by Prieto Cargan personally. It is a highly confidential matter that doesn't concern you. Oh, right, so he needs to, okay, so he needs to help the Praetor out with. Um, yeah, the Praetor makes is sense. here waiting on the decision of Princess Desdemona. Seems legit to me. Oh, good. So long as it passes your inspection. I was so concerned that you would have reservations. Thank goodness you approve. All right, well, he's here to do something for the Praetor. Um, we'll let him in. Praetor Cargan will be most pleased by this. You actually did your job today. Your parents must be so proud. My dad, maybe. My mom's dead. Would you like me to do something about that? Ugh, just go. Mm. Okay, they didn't really like that either. Should I have turned him away? Huh. Okay, definitely a mixed bag tonight. I'm guessing you're an ent. Oh my god! Are you 
you some kind of scary tree monster? <sighs> yes! Now let me in or I'll thwomp and stomp you! We're not saying no, but let's try and decode, use the ring on his bark. I noticed you have something carved on your bark, but I can't quite make out what it says. Somebody carved it on me when I was a sapling. It was a mistake. Mind if I try to read it? Okay. <laughs> it reads, to lodge all power in one party and keep it there is to ensure bad government and the sure and gradual deterioration of public morals. Does that mean anything to you? That was the words of person who came to Woods to write. I remember him, Mark Goblin Twain. <laughs> he was inspiring to Scary Tree Monster. Talked about how to make change in world. And was it through stomping and thwomping? No, it wasn't. That was Scary Tree Monster's idea. He spoke of change through something called corrupt government systems. <laughs> Maybe there's a better way to get people out of your woods. Maybe a more official way. Are you saying Scary Tree Monsters should run for government office to implement real systemic change? <laughs> sure. Why not? Mm. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk to him. And what business would you say you have in the sprawl this evening? Too many people come through my woods. Too many strangers stomping on our roots and throwing their garbage on us. Me and my brothers and sisters say no more. That must be really hard on you and the other scary tree monsters. Not all are scary. I'm inclined to let him in, but... Okay, let's let him in. Let's see what happens. He's here to lodge a formal complaint, so he shouldn't be denied that, right? I believe in you, scary tree monster. I think you'll make a fine governor, or congress tree, or whatever you end up running for. Thank you. Now all I need is a snappy campaign slogan. <laughs> a vote for me is a vote for a tree? A little on the nose. <laughs> what do we get? What do we get? Hey! <laughs> you diverted the life path of a violent monster towards a life of politics and public service. Vote scary tree monster. <laughs> I'm glad my instincts were on, on the nose there. Oh, hello. Hello. I wish safe passage through this gate. I think this might be Princess Desdemona. Can do. I'm just gonna need you to lift that hood. Gotta see if you're human or elf or gelatinous blob. We've had all types tonight. I'm afraid I can't do that. I assure you, I am human. Now please allow me safe passage. That's gotta be the princess. Let's talk to her. You've got a real mysterious, don't ask me any questions vibe going on. What's up with that? I simply have nothing to state or claim. I just wish to enter. You know, I'd say you have a trusting face, but I haven't seen it yet. And you won't. All right, we're going to do a truth spray on her. I am returning to the kingdom after being away by my own volition. I have to hurry. There is a deadline that must be met. I have to inform them of my choice. Ugh! Be gone, Magic Truth Spray! Wow, you've got quite the resistance to that. Mind telling me how I could do that? Uh, it takes a strong-willed mind and a small knowledge of sorcery. How about a wandering brain and a great knowledge of rocks? Alright, what do we do? What do we do, Metal Detector? What's with the neck candy? 
A little out of place for someone dressed so... discreetly. My necklace is none of your concern. So you stole it? I did not steal it! Then it was a gift? Yes, from my mother. I wish I got a gift like that from my mom. Only thing I got from her was this hair. We're gonna return that to her. You know, I could keep this in order to get you to tell me more about yourself, but I won't. I greatly appreciate that. Greatly enough to tell me who you are? No. Aw, you're no fun. That emerald looked like the real thing. Maybe I should call one of the higher-ups about it. Oh, we've run out of the opportunity to do that now, but we're going to let her in, because I'm pretty sure that's Princess Desdemona. I don't know why, but something tells me I should let you enter. Maybe it's the necklace, maybe it's the... Nothing else you've told me about yourself? <laughs> gotta follow my gut on this one. Thank you. The choice you made here today will not go unrewarded. Tacos. What? Make my reward tacos. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Something about her made you think you could trust her. Maybe it was the badass bling? Either way, tacos. That's it for the night shift. Round three stars, I would think. Yeah, we got a couple of not great ones. 20 gold. So the vampire, I think we did that pretty right. I don't know how I could have got the bonus on that. That was perfect. That wasn't great. I don't know quite what to have done there. Likewise there. We did that one well though, and she was all right. Okay. to go, so I guess we'll go up to the tavern. It's you! What are you doing here? Are you here to give me tacos? No. I've come to reveal my true identity to you. So, no tacos? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Desdemona. See? Princess Desdemona? Nah, I knew it all along. <laughs> no, you didn't. Why split hairs? But what about the kidnappers? There were no kidnappers. I disguised myself and ran away. I'm sorry for all the commotion I've caused. But I had to get away to say goodbye to someone important to me before my wedding. I don't understand. I'm being forced to marry one of the suitors from these two rival kingdoms. Yeah, yeah, that's old news. What I don't understand is why you, a princess, are here talking to me about it. Shouldn't there be more official people that could play therapist? <laughs> like Stryker? Ash? Oh god. Oh, not Malcolm. <laughs> I know my father had faith in them. When I'm gone, your advisors will help maintain the balance, blah, blah, blah. They want me out of the way so they can control my father's kingdom. They've never been good at listening to what I want or how I want to rule this land. Nobody listens to me. Sing it, sister. And now I'm being forced to choose between allying the Sprawl with the kingdom of Petrard or the Marvog Empire. You mean Phineas the Pompous Prince or Cargan the Praetor Terror? And it doesn't even matter if I love them or not. At the end of the day, it's strictly politics. Lucky me. This is the first time in the game I've been okay being 12. <laughs> I just want to make the right choice. Tell me, Lil, what do you think of Prince Phineas? He's an asshole. He's the worst. He's way higher maintenance than you seem to be. And he's an asshole. Nuff said. And what about Praetor Cargan? What do you think? I have doubts. Look, I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't already planning my Halloween costume based on her look. But it sounds like she's got a lot of blood on her hands. I know their ways are different than ours, but come on. 
So if you were me and you had the future well-being of the sprawl in your hands, who would you choose? Neither. Oh god. Um I mean of those two. It's gonna be Cargan. Thank you for your honesty. I know my advisors have jerked you around, but I also know you don't always do what they say, and I like that. You remind me of, well, me. And you remind me of me, too. If I was rich and beautiful and influential. Oh, you are influential. You've changed the course of fate more than you know. Don't forget beautiful. I am also beautiful. The sun's coming up. I must go. I shall put my own heart aside and... Do what's best for the kingdom. Although clearly a vampire, Count Heinrich von Pyre was also a registered chiropractor with a private practice on the outskirts of the rapidly gentrifying Little Ogre Town neighborhood. After entering the sprawl, the Count went to his clinic to open for the night. He had a long list of appointments. The Swamp Thing needed an activator adjustment, a mummy needed a deep tissue massage, and some acupuncture with electric current was just the thing for Frankenstein's monster's stiff neck. It was looking like it was going to be a typical night, until an angry mob brandishing pitchforks and torches showed up at Count Von Pyre's door. The horde was led by none other than Myrn Herkin, a local school teacher and leader of the Better Business Bureau. Although lumbars were being loosened, there was a steadily growing number of complaints about bitter necks and cases of anemia resulting from the Count's medical practice. She was there to put a stop to it. Maybe it was the light of the torches reflected in their eyes, but it took just one look for Myrna and the Count to fall madly in love. Or was it the fact that he is a powerful vampire? One of those things. The Count swooped down and lifted Myrna up out of the angry mob. He bit her at least three times and made her drink his own blood to facilitate her own vampiric transformation. She left her gig at the Better Business Bureau and the Count welcomed his new soon-to-be bride into his castle. Now, along with dealing with that pesky von Van Helsing fellow who kept trying to kill him, Heinrich also had a wedding to plan. Wow, that was a big night. The afflicted man was safe from the transformative rays of the full moon, and even should he have transformed, the thick iron bars would have protected everyone. Although the good people of the sprawl were safe from the wrath of his curse, the mourner was not spared the aggression of his fellow inmates. Cornering him in the cell, they shanked him with a handmade shiv, leading him there to bleed to death. Luckily, the shiv was whittled out of a silver spoon, miraculously curing him once and for all of the curse of the beast that had attacked him so long ago. After a fortnight of recovery in the prison's infirmary, the mourner was released back into society. Unfortunately, on his journey back to Scarborough, in the Shire of Bessarion, the mourner was attacked by a different werewolf, and suddenly he's cursed again. It seems that if it wasn't for bad luck, this guy would have no luck at all. <laughs> Crown Prince Phineas of Petrad, Phineas, Count, Crown Prince of Petrad, Phineas Pomp, stumbled back to his lavish lodgings at the palace. Hungry and drunk, he lit the fire and put on a pot of stew before passing out on the floor. He awoke the next morning having no memory of how he got home or why his room reeked of burnt stroganoff. But he did remember the rage of a party thrown in his honour by the Major's Guild and the promises he made to them should he be chosen to marry Princess Desdemona. This Mrs. Abernathy was no Abernathy at all. In reality, it was a horrible shape-shifting monster. Once in prison, the monster assumed the appearance of the warden. The guards, seeing their boss wrongfully imprisoned, released him immediately, and the creature was free to stalk the city streets. Okay, so maybe we should have turned him away. It away. Once inside the sprawl, it, well, we lost track of it. Having the ability to take the form of anyone made it difficult to track, so its whereabouts remain unknown. It was reported later that night that an unusually untalkative guardsman Cecil was trying to break its way into the sprawl's armory. Being denied entry, Garzman Cecil apparently screamed in a high-pitched voice and ran off into the night. Be on the lookout for this creature. Could be anyone. Hmm. Upon entering the, sp the sprawl, Tyronius met Praetor Cargan and her attendants and divulged some of the secrets of necromancy. This forged a bond between the Marvarg Emperor and the Ma Empire and the Mages Guild. In exchange for a number of raised dead spells, as well as a commitment for additional ongoing services, the Marvai Empire vowed to align the guild's interests with their own if the Praetor is chosen for marriage by Princess Desdemona. Yeah, gonna have big implications for that. With dreams of holding political office now planted in the scary tree monster's head, he stomped his way right to the city clerk's office at City Hall and waited for it to open. The next day, he obtained the necessary paperwork to run for political office. Unfortunately, scary tree monster didn't know how to read or write. Revealing his illiteracy made the city clerk's receptionist laugh out loud, which angered Scary Tree Monster so greatly that he proceeded to thwomp her into oblivion. 
When the city clerk showed up finding no receptionist, they hired Scary Tree Monster on the spot to fill the role as their political aide. Scary Tree Monster was now a small cog in the political machine and would no doubt rise in the ranks to one day hold the title of councillor, or dare we say, mayor. <laughs> when Princess Desdemona returned to the castle, she refused to answer any questions regarding her whereabouts. She immediately issued a royal decree to cut funding to any active rescue missions and put an end to the antiquated practice of choosing rescuers via flashy game shows. <laughs> As she lay in bed that night, she reflected on the little guardsman's advice. She knew that her decision would irreversibly alter the fate of the sprawl and the fate of every soul who called it home. There we go. What's it, level, level six now? And although the princess has come home, she is still remaining quiet on where she was during her missing time, but frankly, I do not care. She's got that look at me, I'm back attitude, and it reflects in her style. You know it. She was seen returning to the castle, rocking those possibly was kidnapped leggings, all while sporting a I might have just run away and ran out of money <laughs> hooded cloak. What do you think she's going to be wearing at the wedding? <laughs> no idea, but no doubt it will compliment her chosen spouse's home kingdom. That's right. Princess Desdemona has finally made her choice, and it's Praetor Cargan of the Marvog Empire. There we go. I knew it was going to be them. It was the obvious choice from the get-go. Okay, we'll turn that off. And we'll say, uh, we'll leave it so there for now. She made oh. her choice. Her life is filled with intrigue, and I feel like I am now somehow intertwined with her fate's path. Mm. Oh well, off to go see what the gang's up to. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just say thanks very much for watching this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really enjoying this game. I think it's great. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. We'll be happy to hear them. Uh, and also, if you enjoyed this video, if you could give it a thumbs up, that'd be amazing. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, it'd be fantastic if you could do that as well. So thanks very much. And I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.